Hello guys, this is Vlin here, welcome back to another video, and today I don't think my voice has cut out, <laughs> finally for an intro, but we are starting in the nether, where we absolutely derped up last time, cause, um, yeah, I might have done some excavating off camera, now the funny thing is that, oh, that's wrong chest, look at how much netherrack I have right here, <laughs> oh, that's a lot. So now, if you might have guessed, I also leaked in the last episode. How big is this? Um, I am going to build a nether base. Now, what I mean as nether base is not like an actual mega base in nether. Just a little hub where I can walk around safely without being killed. And also, it being mobless and being able to do some basic functions. So now, I don't know what to do in here. Um, mobs have been spawning. I am going to spawn proof this. I know what I'm going to do is in this... I am gonna, I don't know what design, but I am gonna have, like, a central tower here. That portal's gonna be moved here with some pickaxe. Good luck. <laughs> this portal will link up to my mega base. It'll be this nice tower, and then over here will be a path leading to Soul Sand Valley, and over here will be a path leading to Crimson Forest. If I show you, the end of this is actually Crimson Forest. But anyway, let's start. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this time lapse. That took a real long time just to get this done. So I got this um what's it called? Respawn anchor, that's what it's called. Um figured it out it's in the center, it's kind of illuminating the entire thing. I've got this portal connected to my star race and that portal connected to my mecha base. Although, even though I might be closer done, I still have a lot of work done left. I still need to do these walls, I still need to do the ceiling. Which is going to be a dome shape, and yeah. Now I've got the walls done, um, <clears throat> the side walls. I used purple con concrete. I don't, powder. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Um, I kind of like it, but at the same time, it doesn't look right being stationary. And now I've got a roof on, and this thing looks pretty darn cool, if you ask me. Um, I definitely need to do more lighting, like, right there. I don't know if I'm going to sneak a lantern or write some lamp like there, or if I do a lantern or what. Hello, huge shout out to Impulse SV. His link to his channel will be in the description. He had a video where we made a kind of a little mini nether hub, and that's what inspired me to do this, and that's what inspired me to do this design as well. And since it was so symmetrical, I was kind of having trouble, you know, going, knowing which way to go. I put a lodestone. Funnily enough, this is the exact solution as last season. So I put a lodestone with, um, compass 
point the compass towards there and that's how I know where to go. And this the up one is where my starter base is. In addition to it looking nice, I also want to make it nice and secure. I want to make it so that no mobs can go inside it whatsoever because those are areas are spawnable. Although, as you can see, I have slabs here for most part with stairs mobs can't spawn on. Um, I don't know if they can spawn on a respawn anchor. I'm guessing no, but I don't know for sure. Although, yeah, this area is pretty mob proof. So what I want to do is, on each of these sides, I want to make a 2x3 piston door, because I don't know how to make a 3x3 one, and I kind of want to make redstone doors blocking off each way. You know what? I'm actually gonna up for the challenge of a two by one seamless piece piston door. I've actually never made these. Now I wanna see how many times I've been killed by a piglin. Piglin killed you 36 times? What? Hoglin killed you 20 times. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I've been I've died in the nether a lot. Okay, so I think I might have an idea on how to do this, although it does require some repeater timing. And there's a good chance that I'm going to make a circuit which is infinity, infinitely on. Alright, I think I've got the first part done. Yeah, so now what we need to do is power this piston to push the snow upward. Alright, let's see if the extending will work. No. Oh, look at me. I. What was I thinking when I placed that repeater in? Alright, try two with this 2012 redstone. Oh, yeah, that is good. Let's close it. Ah, dang, it breaks. Alright, I've done some adjustments and this should work. Yes! It got on it. Oh my goodness, it worked. And what do you know? There's nothing there. Now with some more fiddling around, I do have a system which should work. So if I turn this on... Completely locked, if I turn it off, completely unlocked, yes. Something I have not noticed until just now is that this looks, the, with the white um, behind it, it looks very similar to the purple concrete. That's weird. Oh my goodness, what a coincidence. I was mining coal and then look what I found. <laughs> it's a seven, isn't it? Oh man, I'm so lucky. <laughs> Alright, I am gonna try to make a miniature hoglin farm because we are right next to Crimson Forest. There's my new door. Because, you know, I don't want that just to be a nice, pretty, secure thing. I also want to have some functionality to it. I want to make a miniature piglin bartering station and oh my goodness, that piglin just got launched. Alright, I died a couple times, but luckily I got all my stuff back. My axe broke, by the way. I'm being smarter this time because I have a golden golden helmet on now that now that I can actually afford one. Well, that's really scary. <laughs> it would have been even scarier if I didn't have a Goldilocks cap on. Although I was over here so I can grab these. The warped fungi got my stuff again or got my stuff back again and luckily and now hopefully I won't die. And we've made it back safely, which is always nice. So first off, to make this hoglin farm, I put this extensive minecart track, as you can see, for so that minecart hopper can go here in the Crimson Forest where hoglin farm is, retrieve it back to the base, and so on and so on. Now I've got the kill chamber, there's one block beneath this lava, so that the hoglin should fall in there, die, and then their pork chops and leather will be collected. I have not double checked, although I should be far enough away, yeah I think I am, that this should be loaded, or I'm 24 blocks away from my base, so now this will be loaded when I have Kang in there. And lastly, I make the Hoglin spawning chamber and put torches in a pattern like this so that piglins do not spawn. Something else I forgot to show you is that there are actually soul sand, or sorry, soul soil underneath these slabs. So if I get soul speed, I'll run really fast. In here. And I might have just thrown my mouse in that clip. <laughs> I think I FK'd for two hours, maybe a bit less, but this is how much pork chops we have. Pretty good if you ask me. 
Now, I don't need this horrendous patch of potatoes whatsoever. Part one is that I'm going to um, gather the item from here, go up <clears throat> that loop that dropper should um, kind of use a dropper vader and go up and it should go into another hopper. Let's give that a test. Awesome. Now, would it work for multiple items? It should because I was using a comparator clock at the bottom. No, wait, what happened? Okay, now let's try it again. That seemed to have worked. Hold on. Wait, where the heck did they go? Oh, I picked them up already. Hold on. Let's do it again. Yep. There we go. Oh, no. No. No, 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 no. What? No. No, that did not just happen. Oh, man, I got some more pork chops, despite me <laughs> dying from lava. Okay, if everything's working right, despite me swimming, trying to swim in lava, let's see. <clears throat> that did work. All right, if I added this in um, as a barricade, what should happen is the gold goes down here, the pickling grabs it, barters with it, drops in that hopper, and then it receives to a chest. Now, the last thing I have to do, of course, is get the piglins in there because, yeah, it's called piglin bartering for a reason. Now, there's two ways to do it. Either you could play it safe, just put, keep your golden helmet on, or you can do the risky way, put your golden helmet off or punch one of them. And I'm going to be an absolute fool and do it the risky way. All right, my question is, do I hit him or do I take my helmet off? I think I'm going to just do whoop and run. Now I've got my piglin in my cage, and now it's time to test, which is going to be exciting. So we're going to throw the six gold in here. Grab that. Good no gold has gone that chest. Oh, I picked it up. Now the gold doesn't get close enough to pick one. Let's see if a wall fixes it. It'll probably make it worse. I have no idea where those gold ingots went. <laughs> oh my goodness. I put a trapdoor instead. Let's see if it'll bring it out enough. Oh. What is even happening? <laughs> the funny thing is that we actually got a barter in there. <laughs> Now, it looks like I might have fixed it. Let's see. Where did the gold even go? Now, after a couple tweaks, I actually, in the meantime, bartered all the good I had, gold I had, so I'm going to use a couple slabs. Looks like I finally got it to work, which is always nice. And this is what I got from the bartering. So, we've done a very efficient type of piglin bartering system. We've got a hoglin farm to produce us food and leather. We've got this to insert the gold. And most importantly, we've got a huge safe spawn proof. Oh, just as I say that. I have a huge safe infrastructure and that I can AFK safely without worrying to die. And I can go in the nether for certain functions like bartering and food and with that, I also won't need to worry about dying either. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to my channel. I'll fix this um, behind the scenes, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out!